welcome back to the penultimate video of the daily edit. 30 videos in 30 days, seriously, how did we end up here? You're still watching, thank you very much, that's very kind of you. And um, we're back to kind of like my traditional type of video today because I'm going to do a March favourites for you, even though I feel like if you've watched every video this month you're probably going to be able to guess uh, what products I'm going to show you here, but I'm going to do the whole showing you skincare bathroom bits in here, then showing you some makeup bits, showing you some style bits, and then I've also got some random favourites and some book favourites, just chatting you through what I've been reading this month. Some books that I loved, some books not so much, uh, but let's get started with the bathroom bits. I haven't actually got anything to like show you on my face this month, um, and I quickly wanted to discuss the Glossier Milky Oil Waterproof Makeup Remover. I've had so many questions about this. Um, I've used it down to here already, and I've probably only had it a month. Um, so that tells you that I feel like it's quite a small, compact product uh, that's gonna get used up quite quickly. This is 100 mils, the Clarins that I normally use, the Instant Eye Makeup Remover is 125 mil. Um, so I exclusively wear waterproof mascara, therefore I need a bi-phase, kind of oily, hefty eye makeup remover, otherwise it never comes off. It's like putting tar on your eyelashes. So when I saw the Glossier come out with one, I was very interested, because this Clarins one I just used forever since I was born. So I've been testing them and which one do I prefer? Well, I actually think I still prefer the Clarins, but let me like give you the down low. The Clarins is fab. I feel like you need less of this product, um, but it does leave more of like an oily film on your eyes. But I don't find that it stings my eyes at all. I don't find it irritating. The Glossier definitely feels more like a micellar water than it does like an oily biphase makeup remover. Um, so I feel like it leaves less of an oily film on my eye. But if I get it in my eye, I have quite sensitive eyes, I feel like it kind of stings a little bit. So you get a little bit of stinging with this, but no oily film, but then no stinging with this, but a bit of an oily film. I'd rather have a slightly oilier feeling product and no stinging in my eyes. Oh, it is a really good product. I do like it, it does work, but I do think that the Clarins just kind of edges forward for me. Oh, it's the best. A face mask that I've been using all month, you would have seen this in some of my vlogs, is the Pharmacy Honey Potion Renewing Antioxidant Hydration Mask. Uh, I've used a lot of this. Yeah, you can almost see the bottom. Um, I really have this for about six weeks. I'm kind of addicted to it. I feel like it's a little bit, um, when it says hydration, I wouldn't call it a hydrating mask necessarily. This is definitely more of a radiance boosting, kind of dead skin, munching, hmm, exfoliating type mask than I thought it would be. I mean, something like the Peter Thomas Roth is like really extreme. That is like a hard hitting AHA, like kicks you in the balls kind of mask. This definitely isn't that. It's a little bit kind of lighter on the skin. It feels a little bit more gentle, um, but I really, really love the look of my skin when I've used this. I feel like I look like my radiance is boosted. It looks a bit more luminous. I look kind of healthy, dewy, glowy. Um, I pop some oil on after I put that on and I'm like, yes. So really like that. My final bathroom favourite is from IGK and this is their Smoke and Mirrors Conditioning Cleansing Oil. Uh, what vlog did I mention this in? Oh, I think it was my This Is Not My Best Work vlog. <laughs> Definitely wasn't my best work. And I said that I use this product as a reverse poo, which that is, yeah. No, reverse poo is eating food. <laughs> is it called a pre-poo or a co-wash? It's called one of those two things. It might be called both of those things. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but basically I use this before shampoo. So I put this into my hair, to the roots, all over, like get it in there. It says that it's good for dry scalps. I have a very dry scalp. So I saw that and I was like, yes, I like the idea of that. I put it like all the way in, rinse it out. Then I use shampoo over the top of it. And that kind of takes any weight that this conditioner would give to your hair out of the situation. I don't like that like weighty, PC feeling in my hair. Like I don't want to feel like I have conditioner in my hair, but I do quite enjoy the fact that this conditions my extremely dry scalp and leaves my hair like quite shiny. I'm into it. I previously have been a real troll of conditioner, a real hater on conditioner, but I do quite like this. <laughs> I have to take it all back. Um, but if you're interested in my hair routine and how I get my like corrugated roof hair situation going on, I will link that video for you up in the corner um, because I haven't discovered this product 
when I recorded this video, but this month I've discovered it and I like it. I normally try and restrain myself to just three makeup products per favorites video, but I'm breaking out. I'm breaking my own rules. I'm doing four this month. Um, the first one is a very Katie Jane Hughes inspired. Like Katie Jane Hughes is basically like the drinking game word of the daily edit, but it is the VDL Lumi Layer Primer. Um, I picked this up off of Amazon. I'll link it down below for you. I think it was about 13 pounds. It's very affordable. It's a Korean beauty brand. And this primer is just absolutely beautiful. Um, it does have more of like a bluey, lilac-y shift than other primers that I tend to use. Uh, you can kind of see already on my skin, it has that like pinky, lavendery iridescence to it. But it is just so beautiful. It's one of those primers that you can still see on your skin. Like hours later, I still feel that radiance breaking through and it just works so beautifully with my IT Cosmetics. Just leaving this lovely, oh, glow without any shimmer. It's nice applied with your fingers, but I like applying it with this Zoeva 125 stippling brush and just kind of getting a light amount of it sort of all over the face. And then I just blend my IT Cosmetics over the top with the same brush and I have just loved the effect of it. Um, so yeah, I can highly recommend. I think they do something called the Lumi Layer Fresh, which someone told me has more of like a golden champagne undertone to it. So if you're a bit put off by like the blueiness of this, that is definitely uh, worth checking out. I'm very tempted. Uh, but this one, I like it. I love it, great price, great product. All the makeup that I put on between the clips, I will link down in the description box for you below. But on to my next favorite, and it is the Chanel every single time. Every single time I look and I can't see what it says. The Balm Essential in Sculpting. It's the multi-use stick. This is a limited edition product and they came out with it in the shade Sculpting. And I think this other shade was just called Transparent. Um, this is a very transparent, highly glossy, highly dewy, highly glowy highlighter stick. If I put it on the back of my hand, you can just see that shine. It has a slight amount of sheen to it. I'm guessing the transparent one has absolutely no pigment to it at all. This does have a slight champagne-y shimmer in it, but it's nothing that really shows on the skin at all. I feel like it would work on all different skin tones. Annoyingly, whenever I look to link this up, it looks like it is just sold out online everywhere. I'm sure they still have it on a couple of counters and if they don't have it, it is very, very, very similar to the Becca Glow Glaze Stick. I think that's what it's called. It's just, it's just clear. It, it's absolutely beautiful and it's so balmy and it's so glossy on the skin. Um, it kind of is like putting lip balm on your face. <laughs> um, but I love these highlighters, like I have not gone near a powder highlighter now for months. Um, it started off with the Glossier Halo Scope, um, then I moved on to the Becca Glaze Stick, and now I really, really love this. Um, but like I said, it's very, very similar to the Becca. I think when you even compare the price between them to the amount of product that you get, they are, well, they're one and the same, you know? But I just love, I love how healthy and juicy it makes your skin look, and also, looks really nice as an eye gloss. That's also how I'm gonna use it today. I'm gonna put it just over my eyelids cause I really can't be faffed with eyeshadow. I've been doing some uh, crazy things on my eyes. So today we're taking a bit of a day off. That's what it looks like on the eyes. That's what it looks like on the cheek. Um, as with all eye glosses, it's gonna bunch up a little bit. It's gonna crease. That's cool. We're fine with that. Ain't no one perfect. So I've just thrown on my first layer of mascara and whilst I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna show you my lip favorite. I'm just gonna put on the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Glaze. I really like this. If you wanna know my thoughts on milk products in general, I'll leave my full face of milk up there for you. Uh, it's got the whole shebang, purple eyeshadow, the um, oil, oh my God, love eye pigments, love. And then this product, love. It is the lip color in the shade Skills. Um, it's very much the kind of like spring, summer version of MAC Yash in my book. It's that very much a peach. Uh, I'll put it, I'll just put it on for you. Yeah, a peachy nude. How groundbreaking. I would just say it's a little bit kind of paler than Yash. So to me, a little bit more like springy, summery. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. I just think it's a nice color. Very pigmented, pigmented? <laughs> very pigmented, very creamy, um, just very easy and nice to wear. The color range isn't huge. I think they only do about 
10, 12 shades, um, but they're really nice. And I like this one, I like the red as well, the fiery kind of orangey red, but this one I've worn most days this month, so that's telling you something. I've just zoomed you in, I'm really having to like crouch down here to keep in the frame. Um, I did this in my Edinburgh vlog, link that out there for you, where I showed you the Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara. Um, I never would have bought this product. Like I just would have been like, no, not for me, not waterproof, not interested. Was very kindly sent it. I'd never tried anything from Pat McGrath Labs before. Obviously seen so much about it on YouTube. Um, I'd heard quite a bit about this mascara and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a go, but I'm gonna layer it over the top of my long con waterproof missy a bit because I need that to hold a curl. This doesn't hold a curl, which is fine. Like it doesn't claim to hold a curl. It's not waterproof, that's fine. But I need that underneath to like set my curl, hold that in place. And then this over the top, sorry, my camera is held together by blue tack and it just keeps falling over. It's cool. Um, but it does quite wonderful things for your eyelashes. Is it a natural look? No, not at all. Uh, it makes them very, very, very large, kind of spidery, but extremely black and kind of false lashy. Maybe it's not your everyday kind of mascara, but like, what? whoa, whoa. So good for a night out. So good if you want a little bit of extra lash, a little bit of extra drama going on there. I really haven't used a mascara like this in years. Um, but yeah, I like that it gives me the option for absolutely massive eyelashes. So into this would recommend um, but that is everything makeup wise now on to style let's go over there look our new wardrobes oh my word they're changing my life i absolutely love them um, i'll link the video up here if you want to see like a peek inside and have more of a look at them where i do my spring capture wardrobe oh love it style wise i feel like my ultimate favorite are my new wardrobes like ha ah, <laughs> this is what i've been waiting for all this time this is why i was just so 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 excited um yeah they make me very very happy indeed and make just getting ready in the morning opening up my wardrobe sorting out what i need to wear an even more delightful experience um but i'm going to pick out two favorites for you this month and the first favorite is this um when i started wearing this again people were like oh that's a new jacket no it's not it's from jigsaw um i was very kindly sent it last year and it's just like a long line blazer um in this kind of interesting pattern i don't really have anything like this it's a bit houndstoothy kind of a herringbone houndstooth in like a gray and a pale kind of duck egg blue like a more of a pale gray i don't really own anything else like this and whenever i wear it i just feel like it really freshens up an outfit instead of wearing a black jacket it's nice to have more of a paler jacket more on that coming in a tomorrow's spring capsule wardrobe planning video and um, but yeah i've got a lot of wear out of this this month it's a very thin jacket so it's perfect for this kind of weather when you're still wearing a jumper but just wearing a jumper is a little bit chilly so this over the top uh yeah layers up really really well and my other favorite is up here and i just can't bear getting it out because it's just like too perfectly wedged in there and neatly folded but it is a top shop cashmere jumper in bright pink um i have worn this jumper so much like i've surprised myself i've shocked myself i've worn it in videos i've worn it out and whenever i wear it people are just like oh that is a nice jumper and um yeah i mean i'm wearing black today but it has been nice to wear a little bit of color i mean you can see color is kind of lacking in my wardrobe but i like just having specific like one-off pieces that work really well with everything else that i've got like i've got this big old green jumper um and it just works so well with like all of my bottom half options um so instead of having a load of color i like just to have like five pieces or so that pair really nicely with everything else that i own but yeah pink like this bright pink i really really like it um, and i'm just really happy that i even ventured into that color uh, if you haven't tried bright neon fuchsia pink before maybe you should give it a go on to the final section um, which features some random favorites of the month i'm uh, gonna get started with books that i read this month i read three and um, the first one is everything i know about love by dolly alderton yes I've read this book before, uh, but this is the paperback that has come out with a whole new chapter, which is called Everything I Know at 30. And as a 29 year old who is turning 30 in like five months, I was just really interested to see what she had to say. And it was funny and it was lovely and it was such an easy read for me because obviously I've read it before. So entertaining, such a lovely like, oh, 
heartwarming read that will just make you want to like hug your friends and kiss them in the face and tell them that you love them. So really, really, really enjoyed this. Um, then The Tattooist of Outstitch by Heather Morris. I was recommended this book by a lot of people. My friend Katie is a really big reader um, and she had read it earlier in the year and been like, oh my word, what a book. And yeah, oh my word, what a book. Uh, it's based on the powerful true story of a guy called Lael and Heather interviewed him, befriended him, was friends with him for a couple of years and then kind of wrote the story around the stories that he told her. And it's just a really powerful book. It'll make you cry. Uh, I think I cried three times during reading this. I got to like page 60 and I was just like, wow, like I don't, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm so pleased I did. It's such an important story to read. Um, and yeah, it's just completely heartbreaking in places, um, extremely inspiring in other places. Um, yeah, a really, really wow book. I read it in less than 48 hours. I kind of had to stop everything that I was doing. I was like, that is not a priority right now. Reading this book is the priority. Um, so yeah, and then I've almost finished this. So I'm, I'm throwing it in as a book I've hopefully read by the time this weekend comes around. Um, and it is Willful Disregard by Lena Anderson, a novel about love. Um, I, I don't know about this one. I'm kind of not really into it. It's being quite a challenging, tough read. Like I'm really having to like will myself to get through it. Um, so I'm not sure it would be one that I would recommend as highly as these two, but I do think sometimes it's good to read things that maybe you're not so into, good to give yourself a bit of a challenge. Who knows, maybe by the end of it, I would have changed my mind. I'll write a comment below. If I finished it, by the time this video goes up on Saturday, I'll like give you a quick mini review in the comments. Um, but so far, not 100% sure. If ever you wanna know what I'm reading and what I have read, check out my Goodreads account. I'll link it down below for you. I always keep that up to date with uh, yeah, what I'm reading. So that is always there for you. How could I forget this? My favorite favorite of the month, you guys. Um, not only have you been so supportive and literally written the nicest comments, emails, tweets, Instagram DMs, everything this month, which is just delightful. So many of you donated to the Sleep Easy campaign that raised money for the YMCA Downslink group. Mark and I slept outside for the night to raise money, raise awareness, and I couldn't believe just how many of you were so generous, so supportive. If you couldn't donate, you sent like a tweet of support and you shared the Just Giving page and honestly, it just meant the world. So thank you so much for that. We were able to raise over 2,000 pounds, which was well over our target. It exceeded our target. Um, it, it's just incredible. That money is gonna go towards transforming the lives of vulnerable young people down here in Sussex. So I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, you're the best. Um, yeah, one more video to go. Um, tomorrow's video is gonna be like a spring capture wardrobe planning slash where I'm currently at with the whole capture wardrobe buying clothing thing, how I'm trying to be more sustainable. That is coming your way tomorrow. And then I'm taking a wee bit of a break, um, mainly to give everyone like a chance to catch up. I know there's been 31 videos and if you have watched every single one then you literally deserve a medal. But I will be back on the 14th of April. So I'm taking like a little kind of two week gap um, just to get back on top of everything. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for that because that will hopefully be a spring capture wardrobe haul. So keep your eyes peeled. Thank you so much for your support. Although things will go quiet video wise for a little bit, there's still gonna be blog posts, Instagram stories, all of that stuff. I ain't taking a break. I'm just taking a, a little pause. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow with the final daily edit video. I'll see you then, bye.